Hello everyone, my name is Mayuro Vale. I am Assistant Professor in Civil Department, WIT Solapur. So, we are continuing with the topic of design of complete mix activated sludge process. So, this is the second part of the design. So, I, uh, so I request you all to please uh, see the previous video which will be talking about the part one of the design of complete mix activated sludge process. So, what is the learning outcomes? Students will be able to analyze the design of complete mix activated sludge process in wastewater treatment plant. So this is the typical question we are talking about and we had completed five steps. So let us go through the question again. Design a continuous flow completed mix activated sludge process to yield an effluent BOD of 20 mg per liter that is our capital L and suspended solids of 23 mg per liter that is SS for following data provided. Influent BOD is given as 200 mg per liter that is L0 or S0. Then uh, waste water flow rate is given that is 0.2 meter cube per second that is our Q. Then Y is given to be 0.65, KD is 0.05, then theta C is 10 days, then MLVSS is 3000 mg per liter that is our small x. Then uh, return sludge concentration is given that is 15000 mg per liter of suspended solids that is SS and MLVSS ratio is given that is 0.2. So we have completed first five steps and now we are talking about the last five steps. So sixth step will be determination of hydraulic retention time in the reactor that is our capital theta. So how we can write the theta? Theta is basically volume of reactor that is capital V divided by west water flow rate that is Q. But you have to understand we have to take the uh, flow rate in meters, uh, meter cube per day. That's why I'm taking the value here. You can see 17280. So it will be 4855 meter cube divided by 17280 meter cube per day. So it will be coming about 0 0.281 days. If I want to convert it into hours, I can write uh, 6.74 hours. Now let us compute oxygen requirement which will be there in the reactor. So what is the formula for oxygen demand? It is 1.47 in, uh, into Q into S0 minus S minus 1.42 Px. See we have calculated many things from this equation. First Q, Q is 0 0.2 meter cube per second which is given. We have converted uh, to 17.28 into 10 to 6 liters per day that we had did it in step 3 then S0 minus S will be coming about 200 minus 5.5 which will be 194.5 mg per liter and Px is calculated in step 4 which will be 1456 kg per day. If I want to convert it into uh, mg per liter it, it can be written it as 1.456 into 10 raise to 9 mg per liter. So I will just put all these values into the equation and I can get oxygen demand in kg per day as 1.47 into 17.28 into 10 raise to 6 multiplied by 194.5 minus 1.42 into 1.456 multiplied by 10 raise to 9 whole divided by 10 raise to minus 6 because everything is in mg I want to have the value in kg so I will be multiplying it by 10 raise to minus 9 and I will get the value as 2867 kg per day. Now the next step will be computation of volume of air at STP. We had calculated how much oxygen is required but oxygen will be taken from air right. So we also have to compute how much oxygen will also be required. To understand or to calculate it we will use the formula of Q air will be equal to O2 demand which we had calculated in earlier step divided by 0.232 into 1.2. Now you can also uh, put a question like from where these values are coming that is 0.232 and uh, this 1.2. This 0.232 is basically which, uh, fraction of oxygen which is present in the air that is our 23.2 percent of the air will be always having oxygen. So from which this 0.232 is coming in decimals. Now talking about this 1.2 specific weight of air at mean sea level 
at 20 degree celsius is always 1.2 kg per meter cube from where this 1.2 is coming by multiplying it how i can write and how i can simplify the equation i can just say o2 demand divided by 0.278 so this will be my formula but this is the theory part because the aerators which we are uh, putting they also have some efficiency so let us first talk about theoretical part q air will be we uh, 2867 which we had calculated from earlier step divided by 0.278 from this equation will be coming about 10313 meter cube per day so this is the amount of oxygen or air will be required per day as the oxygen transfer efficiency for the porous uh, tube diffusers is always nearly about 8% so actual air actual quantity of air will be uh, find out by dividing it by 0.08 so we can write q air is equal to 10313 divided by 0.08 which will be coming about 128912 meter cube per day and we always know we always have to provide it minimum a uh, two air diffusers if suppose one get a uh, faulty or if one get some repair work or maintenance work the process should not stop and the uh, another diffuser can continue the process so that's why we have to multiply by 2 to get the total volume uh, of air required so design air requirement is always equal to 2 into 128912 into mit, uh, uh, meter cube per day which will be coming about 257824 meter cube per day now continuing with the same we also have to check the amount of air or amount of oxygen which we are providing either they are sufficient or not to check it first we have to check air requirement per unit volume it can be calculated by air requirement divided by volume of reactor so by putting the values that is 128912 meter cube divided by 17280 meter cube we will get nearly about 7.46 meter cube per meter cube so it is okay talking about air requirement per unit of bod5 removed uh, we can calculate by using this formula that is air requirement divided by s not minus s into v putting all these values that is 128912 Uh, meter cube divided by 200 minus 5.5 multiply by uh, 17.28 into 10 raised to 6. Here I am using the volume uh, in uh, liters multiply by 10 raised to minus 6 to convert mg to kg. So I will be getting the values nearly about 36.36 meter cube per kg. But the normal range is always between 50 to 75 meter cube per kg of BOD5 removal. so i have to increase the uh, what i can say uh, the oxygen rate or air rate so let us have a check for f by m ratio also f by m ratio is always represented as s not divided by theta into x so what is our x uh, s not s not is 200 mg per liter divided by what is our theta which we had calculated earlier that is 0.28 in days multiply by 3000 mg per liter which is given to us that is our mlvss so it will be coming about 0.237 per day and what is the normal range normal range is always lies between 0.2 to 0.6 per days so f by m ratio is maintained talking about the volumetric loading that is the last step how we can calculate the volumetric loading it will be q into l not divided by v so what is our q in liters per day that will be 17.28 into 10 raised to 6 multiply by 200 mg per liter into 10 raised to 6 that we have to con we have to convert mg to kg divided by 4855 in meter cube so i will get the value that is 0.712 kg bod5 per meter cube and normal range is 0.8 to 2 per day kg bod5 per meter cube so it means that it is slightly reducing down so we have to increase the volumetric loading in the reactor 
so let us have few review questions for complete mix asp f by m ratio ranges from 0.2 to 0.6 whether this statement is true or false second permissible volumetric loading range for complete mix asp ranges from dash to dash kg bod5 per meter cube so options given are 0.8 and 2 0.7 and 2 0.8 and 3 0.7 and 3 then question 3 will be air requirement per unit bod5 removal in asp ranges from dash to dash meter cube per kg bod5 removal and the options given are 40 and 75 then 50 and 75 then 40 and 80 and 50 and 80 so let us have their answers for the first yes the statement is true f by m ratio always lies between 0.2 to 0.6 for the second the permissible volumetric loading range is always in 0.8 to 2 then uh, air requirement per unit of bod5 removed in asp always ranges from 50 to 75 a meter cube per kg bod5 removal so these are the references i have used to make this presentation thank you